إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين الله سبحانه وتعالى is the one whom we praise we praise Him and we thank Him. We seek refuge in Him from the evil of our own souls and the evil of our actions. Whomsoever He guides, none can misguide Him. And whomsoever He leaves astray, then none can guide Him to the truth. And I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship but God alone and that Muhammad wasallam is His slave and messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah as He should be feared and do not die except as Muslims. O mankind, fear your Lord who created you from one soul, and from that soul its mate, and from those two spread many men and many women. And fear Allah concerning the wombs that bore you, and concerning those whom you ask your rights from, for verily he is ever watchful over you. O you who believe, fear Allah and speak the truth. He will guide you to righteous deeds and forgive you of your sins. And whomsoever obeys Allah and his messenger has achieved the greatest achievement. 
Indeed, the best of speech is the speech of Allah, and the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of affairs are all those that are newly introduced, and everything newly introduced is an innovation, and every innovation leads astray, and everything which leads astray leads to the hellfire, and that which you have been promised will come to pass, and there is nothing you can do to stop it. After the season of Hajj, one thing should be immensely clear. When we see the number of Hajjaj, despite the construction in Mecca and Medina, despite the difficulty of travel, despite the scares of security and safety, despite the health concerns. When we see over three million, some say four million people, make Hajj in one place at one time, we know that we're living in a time which necessitates that we become much more thankful for what we have. I want to give you an example. Not too long ago, Many of us, we could speak to our grandparents about when they made Hajj. <clears throat> and if we're over 40, and we've spoken to our grandparents about making Hajj, it is quite possible that they have made Hajj or had gone to Mecca during the Ottoman period, in the very end of the Ottoman period. We're talking about in the 1920s, the 1930s. In those times, the most people, the largest number of people that would make Hajj in any one year would never go over 100,000. We're talking about in a span of 100 years or less, the number of people making Hajj has gone from 100,000 to millions. So when we have our relatives who are there making Hajj and we see them traveling, while we are here at home, we're all worried for them. Years ago, you couldn't call them on their cell phone while they were in Mina and hear the talbiyah behind them and hear the takbirat behind them. You had to just hope that they were safe and make dua to Allah that they were safe. But now you say, Alhamdulillah, I can call them. Alhamdulillah, they have GPS. I can even see where they are on the map if they have it turned on. There's a great amount of shukr great amount of gratitude that we as believers must give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His blessings. Many times Eid al-Adha throughout the years was the only time that people would eat large amounts of meat during their, during their year. Their diet did not consist of eating meat every single day as is our diet here. Well, at least for some of us. Others of us, mashallah, are much better at that. I remember speaking to one of my teachers about zakat al-fitr. And he said, if you don't have dates, if you don't have barley and grain, then give rice. I said, Shaykh, I'm from Texas. We don't have dates, we don't have barley, we don't have rice. He said, what do you have? I said, we have meat, we have steak. He said, MashaAllah, that's why you guys look like that. We have so much to be thankful for, so much to show gratitude for. But how do we show gratitude? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala in shakartum, la in shakartum la azidannakum. If you show gratitude, I will only increase you. <coughs> so there's nothing lost on us. If we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the fact that even though it was Eid al-Adha and even though we went and we slaughtered a sheep or a goat or we partook in a, in a cow or some share of an animal, that we still have a refrigerator and a freezer full of food at home. We have instantaneous access to food. We have running water in our homes. A lot of this doesn't make sense if we live in the here and now, but if we remember just a few years ago how things were for our parents and our grandparents and our great-grandparents, 
then we know that we have a lot to be thankful for. We have a lot to be thankful for. In Hiliyat al Awliya, Abu Nu'aym, Rahimahullah, he records the story of Abi Hazim Salamat ibn Dinar. And then a man came to him and he said to him, Ya Abu Hazim, ma huwa shukr? Abu Hazim, what is gratitude? How do I express my gratitude? He, Rahimahullah, he said, Shukru al in ra'ayta khayran a'lantahu wa in ra'ayta sharran satartahu. The gratitude of your eyes is that when you see something good, you announce it. You make it prominent. And when you see something bad, you cover it. Man satara ala akhihi muslim Whoever covers the faults of his brother Muslim, then Allah will cover his faults on the Day of Judgment. If you see something good, then you announce it. And as for as the blessings of your Lord, then announce them. So the gratitude of our eyes is to realize that our sight in and of itself is a blessing. But that's not enough. We have to use that sight to promote good and discourage evil. He then said, فَمَا شُكْرُ الْأُذُنَيْنِ What then is gratitude of the ears? قَالَ إِنْ سَمِعْتَ بِهِمَا خَيْرًا وَعِيْتَهُ وَإِنْ سَمِعْتَ بِهِمَا شَرًّا دَفِنْتَهُ he said, the gratitude of your ears is if that you hear something good, you take it in, you understand it, you memorize it, you try to contemplate it. And if you hear something evil, then you bury it. You act as if it doesn't exist. He said, فَمَا شُكْرُ, الْعِ... فما شكر الْيَدَيْن what is the gratitude of your hands? He said, the gratitude of your hands is that you do not take anything which is not yours. But also you don't stop from, you don't prevent anyone from the right of Allah that is in those two hands. And he who begs of you, then do not admonish him. Don't hold back. If you're asked to give, give. If someone has a right over you, give them that right. If someone's asking you in the name of Allah for help and assistance, assist them. And also don't take the rights of others. Qala. فَمَا شُكْرُ الْبَطْنِ What then is the gratitude of the stomach? Or the gratitude of your chest? Could be either because he says أَمَّا شُكْرُ الْبَطْنِ فَأَنْ يَكُونَ أَدْنَاهُ طَعَامًا وَأَنْ يَكُونَ أَعْلَاهُ عِلْمًا The shukr of your inner workings, of your insides, of your innards is that the lower part is reserved for food but the upper part is reserved for knowledge. The Prophet Sallallahu he said, مَنْ هُمَانِ لَا يَشْبَعَانِ طَالِبُ عِلْمٍ وَطَالِبُ الدُّنْيَا There are two people who are never satiated. The one who seeks dunya and the one who seeks knowledge. So just as we fill our stomachs with food, we have to make sure to fill our hearts with the light of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and with knowledge. <coughs> قَالَ فَمَا شُكْرُ الْفَرْجِ He said, then what then is the gratitude of the private parts? He said, كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ He said, 
the gratitude of your private parts is just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Praising those when he said and those who preserve their private parts. Except with their wives or those that their right hands possess. And whoever goes beyond this, seeking illicit relations, then they are the transgressors. What then is the gratitude of our legs? If you see a person who is dead and gone, and you're jealous of their actions, use your two legs to take you towards the actions that he used to do. And if you see someone who's dead and gone, and you didn't like the actions that you did, then you stop yourself from walking towards and proceeding towards those actions, and you have with full gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He then says something extremely profound. And I mention this athar because it's so important after hajj. During hajj, we're continuously reminded of dhikrul lisan, of shukrul lisan, of thanking Allah with our tongues. Every day from the day of Arafah until the three days of Eid, after every prayer, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. My four-year-old, the fourth day after Eid, he said, Dad, what's wrong? There's no more Eid. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. And we say it with our tongues. The Hajjaj are in Mecca. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik. Giving shukr with our, with our tongues. Expressing the greatness of Allah, His right to be worshipped alone, our answering of His call, our service to His cause. But Abu Hazm, he mentions something extremely profound. And it's important for us to remember this after all of these days of dhikr. قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَيَّامُ مِنَا أَيَّامُ أَكْلٍ وَشُرْبٍ وَذِكْرٍ لِلَّهِ the days of Mina, the days of Hajj, the days of Eid are days of food and drink and dhikr and remembrance of Allah. So he says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ يَشْكُرْ بِلِسَانِهِ So as far as the one who thanks with his tongue, shows gratitude with his tongue, وَلَمْ يَشْكُرْ بِجَمِيعِ أَعْضَائِهِ But does not show gratitude with the rest of his limbs, with the entirety of his body. فَكَمَثَلِ رَجُلٍ لَهُ كِسَاءٌ فَأَخَذَهُ بِطَرَفِهِ وَلَمْ يَلْبَسْهُ A person who shows gratitude with their tongue alone and does not show gratitude with the entirety of their bodies by using their body for that which expresses gratitude, for doing the good that shows that they thank Allah. The person who expresses gratitude with their tongue and does not express gratitude with their body is like the person who owns a cloak or a coat and he takes it by its end and he doesn't wear it. He holds it in his hand. He takes it by its end and he doesn't wear it. So it doesn't protect him from heat or cold. It doesn't protect him from rain or snow. Imagine if it was raining outside and each and every one of us had an umbrella and each and every one of us had a raincoat and we walked outside and we walked out with them like this. All right, guys, it's raining. Let's take our umbrellas and our coats with us. Everyone who looks to us would think there's something wrong with us walking with a raincoat in the rain like this. So we have to use the blessings that we've been given to show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not just by lip service, but by becoming people of action. People that make shukr a daily part of their lives. أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ
الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تسن بسنتهم إلى يوم الدين How then can we become people of shukr? People that just don't show gratitude with our tongues just don't give lip service to the gratitude that we have but actually implement that gratitude and that shukr in our daily lives There's about 10 things that we can do to make us people of gratitude. About 10 things that we can do to make us people of gratitude. The first of these is to recognize the environment that we live in and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. Recognize the nature that's around you. Go for a walk. Go for a run. Go out at night and look at the stars. Go out and think about your environment. Don't live your life from office to living room, from living room to bedroom, from bedroom to office, and then you never realize the beauty that's around you. In the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the changing of the night and the day are signs for people of innermost core. In this are signs for those of people of innermost core, those that remember Allah while they're standing, while they're sitting, and while they're lying on their sides. And they ponder over the meanings of nature around them. رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا Lord, you didn't create all of this in vanity or in vain. فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Therefore, save us from the peril of the hellfire. Become cognizant of your surroundings and you become more cognizant of the gratitude that you have to express. Secondly, Recognize your friends and your family. The Prophet ﷺ said, كَمَا هُوَ مَرْوِيٌّ فِي سُنْ لِلْتِرْمِذِي مَنْ لَمْ يَشْكُرِ النَّاسِ لَمْ يَشْكُرِ اللَّهِ He who does not show gratitude to the people has not shown gratitude to God. So be sure to let people know that you appreciate them. And appreciation doesn't mean just coming and saying, Hey man, I really think, thanks a lot for what you did. No, sometimes it's just by giving them a hug, by kissing your children, giving your wife or a husband or your husband a kiss on the cheek, by showing and expressing some form of gratitude that lets them know that you value them and you value your connection to them and that connection you feel will take you closer to Allah. al aqra ibn Habis one of the companions of the Prophet وسلم, and a very rough man. He was a Bedouin that came out of the desert and he came to the Prophet وسلم, and he followed him and he believed him but he was still on his harsh ways. And so the Prophet وسلم, as he was sitting with him one of his grandchildren came in and the Prophet وسلم, took him and he hugged him and he kissed him. 
And he said, Inna li ashram min al walad, walam uqabbal ahadam minhum abada. I have ten sons. I've never kissed one of them even once. قال وهل أملك أن نزع الله الرحمة من قلبك أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم And I have control over Allah having taken mercy out of your heart. So express gratitude to your children regardless of their age. Our children can be 25, 30, 40 years old. To us they're still three years old, two years old. Show gratitude to your neighbors. Show gratitude to your friends and your co-workers. Let them know that you appreciate what they do for you. If you're a manager, let your team know that you appreciate them and that you're looking out for them. If you're a team member, let your boss know that you appreciate them and that you're looking out for them as well. مَنْ لَمْ يَشْكُرِ النَّاسِ لَمْ يَشْكُرِ اللَّهِ Whoever doesn't show gratitude to the people, then has not shown gratitude to Allah. It's important as well to get exercise. You might be saying, how can exercise make me a more grateful person? Exercise will make you a more grateful person because it increases your cognitive ability. It allows you to remember more. And when you remember more, you have more to be thankful of. When your body is healthier, you have more to be thankful of and you have more ability to go forward and do things which are expressions of gratitude. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said, كَانَ بَعْضُ السَّلَفْ يُوسُونَ أَنْ لَا يَتْرُكِ الْمُسْلِمْ ثَلَاثِ الْمَشِي وَالْرِّيَاضَ وَالْجِمَاعَ Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said, a Muslim should never leave off three things. Walking, exercise, and intercourse. Because each of these things are outlets for him to relieve stress and to become better. It's important as well that to show gratitude, that you have the gratitude of your heart, the gratitude of your insides, the gratitude of your innermost self, as Abu Hazm was asked about, and yakuna a'lahu ilman, that the upper part of it is filled with knowledge, that you meditate and you think about the things that you've done. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he would sit every single day after Fajr. And he used to tell his companions, he used to say, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. Take yourself to account before you are taken to account. And he used to sit and he used to say to himself, Umar, you have a chance to make it today. And he used to go into business with his, with his soul and he used to say, we're going into business today, ya nafs, O oh soul. So don't let me down. We can either win everything or lose everything. Some scholars say that you should look at every single day as a treasure chest. And think to yourself, I can fill this treasure chest with gold, I can fill it with coal, or I can fill it with nothing. On the day when all of the gold is present, presented to me, I'll be extremely happy. And on the day when all of the coal is presented to me, it will be extremely woeful because it will only heat the fire more. And if I end up with nothing and just a bunch of empty boxes, then all I'm left is with the worst of regret. So make every day a golden day. Fill every day like a treasure chest. It's important to sleep, to become a person of gratitude. Because you can never have enough shukr of Allah if you're not using what He's given you in the proper way. Just like exercise, your body has a right over you. The Prophet ﷺ told Salman, your body has a right over you. So give everyone that has a right, give them their right. So make sure that you're getting the sleep that you need. Find yourself cranky, find yourself negative, find yourself that nothing's going good, it may just mean that you need a little bit of sleep. So if you sleep, become a person of shukr. Remember your adhkar before you go to sleep. Remember them when, when waking up. And one thing can change that nap or that nighttime sleep into an act of ibadah. 
that you make the intention before you go to sleep that I'm sleeping because I'm showing gratitude for my body and not using it more than necessary. It's not good to run ourselves into the ground. If you make that intention that I'm sleeping for Allah because He has made this body an amana, a trust with me, then that act of sleep becomes an act of worship. It's important to stay in touch with others and specifically to have physical contact with them. The Prophet ﷺ said when two believers meet each other and they shake hands that their sins fall off until the first of them repeals his hand. And it's important to always be optimistic. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana yuhibbu al-fa'l fi sha'nihi kullihi. He used to love optimism in everything that he did. So don't go through the day pessimistic. Even when something bad happens to you, say to yourself, I had a teacher, he used to say, Alhamdulillah lil ashra. I used to thank Allah for the evil people. So why would you say that? He said, I say that because every time I meet somebody who's rude or nasty or evil, I always remember how I'm not so sp supposed to be and I try to become a better person. Allahumma wafaqna lil khair. Allahumma inna zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al khasirin. Allahumma inna nas'aluka hubbak wa hubba man yuhibbak wa hubba amalin yukharribuna ila hubbika ya rabbil alameen. Oh Allah, we ask you for your love the love of those who love you, and the love of actions that take us closer to your, your love, O Lord of the worlds. Allahumma ja'alna min ahl al-shukr. Allahumma ja'alna min ahl al-hamd. Allahumma ja'alna min ahl al-shukr. Wajma'na bi nabiyyina yawm al-qiyamati, ya Rabb al-alameen. O Allah, make us people of gratitude, make us people of thanks, and make us people that are gathered with our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the Day of Judgment. Wa aqim as-salaam.